Hello everyone, my name is Neil McLaughlin, I'm the UK Phil CTO for Nerio. Um, obviously there's a huge announcement yesterday, so um, there's been a lot of questions on Twitter, um, a lot of questions on LinkedIn, so I just thought I'd put a, a quick video together, um, just to make it go through sort of Cloud PC or Microsoft 365 as we now call it, um, because um, as my role at Nerio, um, I've been involved with testing um, sort of Microsoft 365 for the past couple of weeks and We've been working very closely with Microsoft for the, the past few months um, on sort of Microsoft 365, and we're happy to have that as a sort of service offering within Nerdio itself as well, which is very exciting. So um, I'm just probably going to spend five to 10 minutes just walking through um, some blog posts that um, our CEO, Vadim, has written, and then we'll do some quick hands-on um, via the native via the Nerio console and also via the native mem console, and we'll just show you quickly what this feature actually looks like. So. Um, so our CEO, Vadim, he's written a really detailed post, which you can see here. He's written two, actually. So this is the first one. It's sort of the introduction to, to what is sort of Microsoft 365. So we'll go through. We'll spend a bit of time on that. Um, and then we can do some quick comparisons um, against Azure Virtual Desktop, which was a very, very, very common question yesterday. Um, my sort of colleague, Baz Van Kam, has done a cheat sheet. So um, we can go through that. And um, we wrote that alongside uh, Vadim as well. And that'll just sort of show you some very, sort of very high level differences um, between these two products. Um, and then I'm sure at a later stage, we'll be discussing the price points, which scenario fits into, into each product, etc. So, So, I mean, let's start right at the beginning. I mean, what is exactly sort of Microsoft Windows 365? So, um, when you think about your virtual desktop, uh, it's basically priced on consumption. You pay for what you use, essentially, which is obviously the, the Azure uh, billing model. So Microsoft 365 is a dedicated fixed price service. So you pay for your own personal PC, essentially, in Microsoft Azure. OK, so no more, say, if you're using it for five hours, you pay for it over five hours. You pay a set price per month for that PC. OK, so. There's going to be different SKUs available. Um, so the pricing for those SKUs will be uh, released on August the 2nd, I believe. Um, so it'll be interesting to see what those price points are and how they can sort of compare to Azure Virtual Desktop. And um, we'll be doing lots of comparisons against that. Um, but I think a lot of people are going to like it purely because it is a fixed price product. OK, so you know exactly what you're going to be paying for each month. Um, the only downside that I can think of at, that st at this stage is, well, what if someone doesn't use it? Okay, so if I have 200 people in my environment, for example, um, and they all want to use the service, I have to assign them all a license to that. Okay, and I'm paying for that license, irrelevant of whether you use it or not. To me, that's the biggest difference um, between sort of Azure Virtual Desktop, and that's what customers will need to sort of look at when they're looking at the two products against which is the best one to use. Um, but we can go through that at a later date. Um, obviously, dedicated and persistent. So um, it is your desktop. It will always be your desktop. Okay. So um, none of these sort of multi-user desktops anymore. Um, you will be assigned to your personal desktop. So it's a one-to-one -one ratio. So you, will, when you log on to the desktop, you will log on to exactly the same desktop each day. Okay. Um, monthly price, as we just as we just discussed, right? So the other big difference is the Microsoft 365 Cloud. So um, when at the moment, if you use sort of your virtual desktop, um, it's part of your own subscription. Okay, so you're running that um, compute within Azure under your own subscription. Um, with Microsoft Research Cloud, that's not the case anymore. Okay, so um, the subscription is managed by Microsoft. Okay, you don't have access to that workstation. You can't go in and change that. You can resize stuff, but it's only via the Microsoft control plane, right? So we do not have direct access to the desktop anymore. So that's a, a huge change as well um, that people need to be aware of. So um, some people will like that. Some people won't like that, but that, that's the difference between the two services. Um, Cost-wise, as I discussed, um, there's going to be sort of 12 different SKUs, ranging from one CPU up to eight V CPUs, and ranging from two to 32 gigs of RAM, and then up to 64 up to 512 gigabytes of storage. Um, interestingly enough as well, um, what I read yesterday is to allowing you to basically move up and down the SKUs as well. So if you can start off at low SKU, quite cheap, if you feel you need a bit more grunt, um, the users will have the ability to basically go up and down as they need to. So uh, that, that's quite a nice feature. Obviously, um, the, the bigger the uh, VM size is, the more it's going to cost. So um, people need to be careful about that. Otherwise, you know, users like the less start giving themselves beefy PCs. Um, so licensing, um, so you need a, a Windows 10 or 11 enterprise subscription license and also we, you will need Intune license, right? So 
Um, I'm not a licensing expert, so I won't go into a lot of detail about that, but um, it's likely there's going to be additional licenses depending on your current licensing model that you're going to have, right? If you've just got a basic Windows 10 license, you probably need a bit extra, whether that's sort of a Windows 10 Enterprise E3 or E5 um, license on top of the Cloud PC license as well. So when you think about costings, we need to bear that into, into bear as well. Okay. Um, Right, so how does it work again? So basically it's on the existing control plane, so you connect to it exactly the same way as you do with your existing um, sort of uh, Azure virtual desktops. Um, but you connect to it via the, the control plane as a client, as I mentioned. Um, so authentication wise, what do you need for it? So the enterprise version, you require a full um, Active Directory domain at this moment, which is hybrid join enabled. Okay, so that's requirement as of today. I'm pretty sure in the future that will get changed um, to Azure AD join, which went into public preview yesterday as well for uh, Azure Virtual Desktop, which is quite interesting. Um, if you're using the, the self-service capability, which is the business PC version, that's the lowest spec version um, of, of Microsoft 365, um, you just need um, Azure AD, okay? So, and that's the biggest difference to those two. I think most people who I speak to, they'll be going for the enterprise version. Um, in that case, you need a full on um, AD domain for now and also hybrid join enabled with Azure AD as well. So uh, be careful of that. So if you're running um, Azure Active Directory domain services at this stage, you won't be able to run it. You need to go away and install um, an Active Directory domain, which is gonna be a bit kicker for some people, um, but that's just the way it is at the moment until we get that uh, Azure AD um, join connectivity. Um, I won't go into a lot of detail through all this in detail, but essentially another thing to worth worth noting is the networking. Okay, so a lot of you are probably thinking, well, okay, if my if my VM is hosted within Azure, I, I don't have access to by Microsoft, I don't have access to it. What do I do about networking? So when you configure uh, Microsoft 365, you essentially need to create a connection, um, a network connection. Um, to the VNet that that's going to be using. And essentially what happens is when that VM is created, it injects the NIC into your own subscription, right? So if you have a VNet which you use today, say for example, for your um, Azure Virtual Desktops, you configure the same VNet. And that essentially means that when that um, Microsoft 365 VM is provisioned, um, it will be connected to your own VNet, right? Which will give you the connectivity that you need to do the like, domain join, connect your file servers, all that kind of stuff. Okay, so that's quite critical to important to think about when you're doing that. So um, if you do want connectivity back to your own environment, then you're going to have all the networking that you'd have in place uh, at, that you do today with um, sort of Azure Virtual Desktop. So if you need site-to-site -site VPNs and VNet peering and all that kind of stuff, um, that will still be a requirement. For the self-service model, you can't do that. So you literally are the in with the Microsoft. So um, you just get a connection onto the internet and that's pretty much it. Okay. Okay, so that's that one. We'll go through that one and do a bit of hands-on demo as well. Okay, um, you can read the full article here as well. I'm not going to go through it in massive detail. So end user experience, we'll do that when we go to the demo. Okay, so that's pretty much what it looks like. And then you just connect to it as you do today. Um, so how do we support Nerdio? Um, how do we support Microsoft 365? Well, as I mentioned, from day one release, um, where we have Nerd we have it integrated within the Nerdio console. So we have customers who would probably want to use this alongside their existing Azure Virtual Desktop deployment, or they could use it wholly, or they can use it instead of. It depends, there's lots of different use cases for each. Um, some customers may just want 10 people on this, for example, then the rest of their staff on the sort of Azure Virtual Desktop or the other way around. Um, so we're basically just giving um, customers the flexibility um, to, to pick which one they want to use. Um, the other popular scenario which I can I can imagine is the image management. So um, when you go to Azure Virtual Desktop, um, at the moment you, you have the option within Nerdio, you can create your images. So that's one of our very popular options. Um, within uh, Microsoft, within Windows 365, um, you basically have to use the Azure images or you need to create a custom image and load that into Azure and then you can pick that uh, when you go into this. So most important thing, what does it look like? So uh, what I'll do, I'll show you what it looks like in Nerdio console. So this is our Nerdio console. And as you can see, um, we've, we've added this Microsoft 365 portion to it. Okay, so what I'll do, I'll go through these menus. Um, I'll show you what each bit does. So this is the 
the main control plane. So in here, we see our, all our cloud PCs, which has been assigned. Okay, so I can do basic functions within here. So I can do uh, VM the restart or reprovision. So if you want to rebuild that, we can do that from here as well. Okay, and as you can see, we've got some installing some clients and stuff in there as well. So we can go to the provisioning policies, right? So within here, so the way uh, VMs are provisioned within um, sort of the Windows 365 service is essentially what happens is when you create the provisioning policy, right? So you need a provisioning policy. What what you're basically saying here is, um, I want to have an image and a network connection and an AD group, okay? Now, what's gonna happen is when all those three criteria are met, that provisioning policy is gonna be kicked off by the watchdog service, okay? So literally all you have to do is assign a license and drop that person into a, an AD group. And that means straight away or within a very short period of time, um, the VM will be provisioned automatically for you. Okay, so you don't have to go in and start creating VM and stuff like that. It's all done in the background. So really, really simple, really, really quick. So just uh, an example of uh, the one that we're using at the moment, for example. So within here, we've got a default provisioning policy description. And then this is the image that we're using. So if you wanted to, you can create different ones. So these are custom images that we created in Nerdio. So using our scripted actions, you can install all the software and that stuff. Um, or you can use the built-in uh, gallery images from Microsoft Azure as well, or some custom images that you've gone and created yourself. Right, okay. And then obviously the network connection. So the network connection is the connectivity back to your environment. So if you need to connect to your domain controllers and that kind of stuff, that's where you configure here. So that VNet is the one where all that connectivity is. And then you've got your Azure AD uh, group assignments as well. So these are um, the people who would need access to those desktops. So example, if you need to have different groups with different images, then this is where you configure those um, and assign each image to different groups of people. Okay. And then essentially, as I mentioned before, we've got our network connection. So within here, we can create our network connection. Um, so that simple, we need to go into here, name for it, the resource group, uh, where you want. So as I mentioned, so what happens is, um, the, the, the dicks are pretty much injected into the image, into the VM, sorry. Um, so you need the resource group to tell it to, to where those virtual, sort of virtual nicks are gonna sit. So that's where you can figure that here. And then you have a sort of network connection. So that's the network connection that they're going to use. And then the Active Directory domain that you want it to do the domain join to. Okay, so again, really, really simple. That's all you need to configure. And then we've got some very basic user settings that you need to configure with here as well. So um, here, I think you can create stuff like local administrator and that kind of stuff. So dead easy. Okay, so as you can tell, this that's pretty much all there is to it, right? To get up from running, that's pretty much all you have to do. So dead, dead simple that easy to use. Um, and as I said, you can use that alongside sort of as your virtual desktop as well. So how does it look like within the default console? So let's have a look. Um, so if you go into the, the MEM, Microsoft Endpoint Manager, so this is where you would see it. So if we go here to devices, and then we should see a cloud PC, yep. So this is where you would control it within MEM as well. So in here, you sort of get a sort of high level overview of what's going on, so I can go in here Go to all my cloud PCs, and that's where I could see um, all the ones that I've got here at the moment. Okay, so quite simple. And then again, provision policies, um, they're similar to what we just created uh, back in the earlier console. Okay, and then device images, um, you can sort of, uh, this is where you'd add all your, your custom images if you had them as well from in there. All right, okay. Okay, and that's obviously where you configure your network connection and your on your user settings. So as you can see, the stuff that we configure in Nerdio uh, is pretty much the same stuff that we configure in here as well, although it is slightly easier to use from Nerdio. Um, you can do stuff like the, the RBAT provisioning as well from Nerdio as well, just so you can go down the roles and configure permissions a bit further. Okay, so now we've done that. So you're probably more asking sort of what does it look like? Okay, so you can connect to it two ways. So you can connect to it via the same um, client that you used previously. So that's the remote desktop client. So using the remote desktop client, so here's one I prepared earlier, um, you can go into here, right? Okay, so you can you can still do all your multi-monitor displays, all that kind of stuff. So uh, let's go to a single display. I won't start in full screen, and then we'll connect to my cloud PC and just see what the experience looks like. Do the dirt, he says, wait for that to come up. 
So this is uh, one that I had provisioned earlier. So put my password in there. So you can see pretty much exactly the same experience that you connect to your Azure Visual Desktop um, with today. Okay. Okay, and that's going to go in and any second now. So there you go. So that's me connected in. And as you can tell, I, I did a, a quick speed test before just to see how quick it was. Not, not as quick as I expected, to be honest with you, um, but still a lot faster probably than your sort of on-premise connection. Right, okay. So that's me connected. So there's nothing new, nothing exciting there. Um, so that's how you connect to your cloud PC. And there's also the web URL as well, which is new. Okay, so if you go to um, cloudpc.microsoft.com, um, you can connect to there if you sign in. And this is what you see here. So this is me. Um, and that's my desktop there. So I can just click on that and go to open in a browser. Um, and as you see, that just goes to this drdweb.wd.microsoft.com, which is the standard uh, web URL anyway. So um, again, nothing new, nothing exciting there. It's basically just using the existing um, Azure Virtual Desktop infrastructure to connect in. Um, the Azure Virtual Desktop agent as well. Um, I believe it's the same version on there as well. So um, again, a lot of, lot of similarities. Um, so the biggest points for me is it's fixed price, um, but it's a one-to-one -one mapping um, and it's also um, hosted in Microsoft description. To me, they're, they're the biggest differences. Um, so, and the cost analysis is going to be quite interesting. So we'll be doing some more of that um, when the when the licenses come out. So another thing to mention is, so now what we'll do is we'll just do a quick comparison. Again, how, how does it compare to sort of Azure Virtual Desktop? So um, my colleague, Baz Van Kam and, and Vadim, I've done a quick uh, sort of cheat sheet. Um, and this is what it compares. So we'll basically just run through that. So control plane, as we just seen, um, is pretty much the same as Azure Virtual Desktop. And um, you can get the same brokers, the agents, all the same, that kind of stuff. So there's no difference there. Um, Azure Subscription, as we just mentioned, um, Windows 365 sits inside the Microsoft's own subscription. We don't manage that subscription anymore. We still need a subscription for all the VNets, all the connectivity, all that kind of stuff. Um, so that's the, the biggest difference as well. So Microsoft subscription, you don't have access to that. You only have access to that via the Nerdio or via Microsoft Endpoint Manager to, to control stuff in there, okay? Um, the same for storage, so um, compute storage is exactly the same, managed by Microsoft, right? Networking, that's still managed by you. Okay, so for this, for this, I'm going to focus on the sort of enterprise side because that's where I see most customers I work with, they'll be going. Um, there are differences between the self-service cloud PC, which we'll probably go into detail on another stage, but it's a bit, bit of a less, you don't have as much control. So networking, um, you still have to configure connectivity back to your environment. So you can still need to have site-to-site -site VPNs. You're still going to configure VNets or your firewalls, all that kind of stuff um, needs to be done at the networking level. Okay, so they say the networks, the network cards are injected into your own subscription. Okay, user profiles, another big one. So most of those people who use your virtual desktop today, they'll be used to using uh, FS objects, local profiles only. On here right because you want a one-to-one -one mapping right you're not you don't need to log on to multiple servers every day therefore you don't really need profile management now there is no technical reason why you can't just install the fs logic agent and configure it i wouldn't advise it because it's not uh supported out of the box i don't believe um and also you may have problems with sort of storage latency and that kind of stuff um but um, no FS logic, so that's another uh, sort of thing that you need to think about when working out costings and stuff like that as well. Um, identity, um, so within your virtual desktop, um, you could configure your identity however you wanted it. Um, so as of starting today, you can do, do Azure AD join. Um, you could configure a full-on Active Directory, or you could configure um, Azure Active Directory domain services. With um, Microsoft Windows 365 as it is today, um, you need hybrid join, AD join. So that means a full on Active Directory and also Azure AD as well. Azure Active Directory domain services is not supported. So if you're running AD um, DS, you're out of luck. You need to wait for the either the um, Azure AD join coming, which is coming soon, um, or you need to sort of spin up a full on Active Directory domain or use Azure Virtual Desktop. And Management portal, as we've just seen, um, everything is managed via the Microsoft Endpoint Manager. Okay, so 
with Windows Windows 365, um, as you can see, I mean, MEM does a lot. Not a lot of people use it, but it does a lot. So you can apply security policies, defender policies. You can deploy software. You can control your Windows updates. You can do everything. This is the way that Microsoft are working towards in the future. And the way sort of I see the sort of Windows 365 is everything's controlled into one place, right? So you've got your on-prem, you've got your VDI desktops, you've got your contractors, you've got all that stuff. Everything is now becoming central. And this is the control plane or Nerdio um, where you want to control it from. Okay, so that's the one of the other big differences as well. Okay, so let's have a look at that. So, so as I said, MEM is your control plane or Nerdio. Um, operating system, so Windows 10 or 11 Enterprise, single session only. That's the other big difference. There is no Windows 10 multi-session um, within Windows 365, purely because it's the one-to-one um, -one mapping, right? So you don't need multi-session, okay? So that's the, the other biggie to remember as well. Desktop image management. So um, we've got a few options here. So you can use Nerdio to manage your desktops. You can build your custom images within Azure. Um, or you can just use the Windows 10 SKUs um, from the Azure Marketplace. So I think the way Microsoft are trying to position it is you, you pick the Windows 10 SKUs and then you lay everything on top with Microsoft Endpoint Manager. OK, so you can do that if you want to, or you can use our uh, Nerdio custom scripted actions, for example, to build your image um, or other methods as well. So that's the big difference as well. Um, obviously, we're used to especially within the Azure Visual Desktop world, just essentially um, doing image management by the central core image. Um, that's changing by the looks of things. Now it's a kind of our sort of Microsoft 365 or Windows 365. I keep on saying Microsoft 365. Windows 365 um, VMs are essentially just a persistent desktop. They're a physical desktop. They're managed in exactly the same way. You deploy the initial deployment once, and then you manage stuff ongoing from there, just as you would do with uh, sort of uh, persistent one-to-one -one desktops. Okay, applications and updates, as we just discussed, um, MEM is the primary delivery method for that. Um, or you need to use something like WSUS or Windows Update or however you want to do it. Okay, so obviously we're used to doing it via image management. Um, when we sort of talk about your visual desktop, so that's a number change as well. All those desktops will now have to be individually managed rather than managed from one central image. So that's another big change. Backups and DR. Um, you can't do any hyper level, hypervisor level backups because we don't have access to hypervisor. Okay, remember these are personal desktop PCs. Um, some people like to have that stuff backed up. Again, the way that Microsoft is visioning it is your data should be in OneDrive. I know your applications stuff delivered by Intune. So if I get a different PC or my PC is reprovisioned, it shouldn't matter because I've still got all my user data and my applications should be re-added by the Intune automatically, right? So again, another big difference compared to Azure versus desktop as we work today. Um, monitoring, so it is now endpoint analytics and um, which is delivered as part of sort of Intune slash MEM. And um, so that's another big change. Um, obviously, with Azure Virtual Desktop, we use Azure Monitor. OK, so big change there. And also user profile, as we just uh, discussed, uh, now local rather than using FS Logics, networking, as we discussed, and the VNets are now managed um, by yourselves. And then you need to configure that. And then you need to have connectivity back to your existing environment um, via the VNet configs. Um, auto scaling not applicable because it's a one-to-one -one mapping. So that's another big change from Azure Virtual Desktop as well, okay? Um, connectivity, as we just discussed, you can use the, the Cloud PC web console or you can use the remote desktop client. Um, from past experience, um, I've found that using the, the, the web client isn't as good as using a full client. So um, if you can use the, the full client, if you can do, because you, you just you get a better experience and you get more options and control and stuff like that. OK, so that's that one. And um, printing and scanning. So um, pretty much the, the same as it is, it is redirected by the client um, as it is today and as your virtual desktop. Um, you can also use sort of universal print because you have that network connectivity there as well and network based printing as well. OK, um, self-service, as we just saw, you can do self-service within the Nerdio console or you can do it within the MEM console as well. OK, licensing. I'm not going to go into a lot of detail at that stage because we're still, still trying to sort all that out. Um, but essentially, you need a Windows 10 Enterprise, as you would do um, within Azure Virtual Desktop Description. The only thing I would say 
you need to make sure you have that you probably don't have today is obviously the, the 365 license, which is a separate license, okay? And also you need to make sure that you have Intune enabled within your existing license. So if you don't, you can get a special Intune license or you can use one of the uh, the existing sort of E3 or E5 licenses um, for that as well. So that's pretty much it really. Um, that's a sort of very sort of high level overview uh, of what this is. Um, as I mentioned, the, the biggest change for most people is going to be the fact that this is now managed by Microsoft Endpoint Manager, right? So all your applications, all your provisioning, everything like that, you can do either do it by MEM or you can do it through an ADO, right? If you've got an existing Azure Virtual Desktop uh, solution, then I'd recommend you do it via Nadio because you can reuse the same images. For example, we are working on a way to convert a multi-session into single session. So you don't have to mess about sort of recreating all your images, stuff like that. You can just use exactly the same image and you can do all your user management from within Nadio as well. So you can flick and choose between if you want to use your Azure Virtual Desktop or if you want to use Windows 365 as well. Okay. So that's all I want to share. Just a very, no fancy video, no sort of very high level uh, in-depth uh, review. Um, just this is what it is. Uh, if you've got any questions around um, sort of Microsoft 365, um, please feel free or Windows 365. I keep on calling it Microsoft 365 and Windows 365. I keep on getting confused. I probably will do it for a few days. Um, if you've got any questions around the service or if you want me to test something for you or anything like that, um, please let me know. Um, we'll be discussing it on uh, as part of the uh, UK as your virtual desktop user group meeting, which is happening on the 5th of August. So if you've got any more questions or if you need to know anything, um, please feel free to sign up and come to that as well. So, all right, that's it from me. Um, thank you and I'll see you later. Bye-bye.